Hi, this is Alana from Praying Christian Women. I am here with Jamie. How's it going, Jamie? It's going well. I'm really excited that we're here. Yes, this is the Praying Christian Women Online Conference of 2021. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah. And just so you know, we wanted to just hop on and introduce ourselves and let you know a little bit about what to expect with this conference, because frankly, this is our first conference like this, and it maybe it's your first conference like this, and you're just kind of wondering what to expect. Um, so we have 23 speakers, Alana and myself included. Um, there are a total... And or do we count us two? Because we kind of we kind of go together in a lot of things. We do. We do share some parts of our brains. <laughs> somewhat connected in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> we count as one a piece. So we count as two individuals in my that count works. of 23 speakers. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, but yeah, and there are 22 sessions, including this welcome. And yeah, there's just going to be so much involved. I mean, you're just going to have so much, it's going to be just like a a fire hose of prayer instruction and teaching Mm -hmm. and wisdom. I can't wait. So, yeah. So the idea of an online prayer conference that lasts three days might be slightly confusing. So if you're confused about the format or even just curious, this isn't something where you show up at nine in the morning and we're going to be praying until like nine in the evening or anything like that. Basically, we want to offer you all of the encouragement and inspiration to help you grow in your prayer life. So that's going to come from some interview type styles where we can talk to just real experts in the fields of prayer and Christian living and Bible motivation and encouragement. And some of it's going to be some of these experts just delivering to you straight from their heart some of the encouragement that they want to offer you today. Yeah. And I would really recommend looking ahead of time as you see, as you go down, you don't have to attend every session. If you see one that really looks appealing to you or many of them do, you know, pick and choose which ones you would like to show up to. We have a schedule each day um, and on the, on the page for that conference day. And I would really recommend looking a few of our speakers, including myself for one of one of the talks, um, have downloadable worksheets so that you can print them out if you want, or, you know, you can pick and choose. I would recommend having a journal. I know some of the sessions will ask for you to do some reflection and some writing down of things, not to mention taking notes would probably be good, especially since these sessions are Uh, they're going to be live each one for 24 hours after they first air. And that may or may not be enough time for you. You might want to take good notes so you can go back and reflect. Or if you really want to have these forever and ever, you can get an all access pass, which you probably know about because if you signed up, it prompted you if you wanted this all access pass. But what that is, is it's an opportunity for you to get lifetime access to the all of the sessions Um, You will also get a bonus session that Alana and I will be bringing to you um, that's kind of a step-by-step praying through your home, and you'll be able to attend a live Zoom retreat with us. So those are some bonuses that you'll get along with it. Um, And I think this would be perfect if you want to revisit the sessions kind of with a less hurried agenda. If you want to maybe grab a few friends, this was the idea that excited me was getting a few friends together or family members and having like a little mini retreat, maybe over a weekend or something. There are a lot of things that you can do with having this recorded, like all of these sessions recorded and, and with lifetime access. So exactly, exactly. Yeah. We are offering you so much in these next three days. And for some people, it's going to be Uh, exactly what you need to give that spark and vitality back to your prayer life. For some people, it might feel like drinking from a fire hose, (laughs) which is why we wanted to offer the all access pass so that you could take your time. You could go back and revisit things. You don't need to feel like, you know, maybe you're listening to even like Jamie and me right now, and you're taking the kids to school or something, and you want a format that's less hurried and harried. That's what the all access pass would be for. But regardless, we are so glad that you're here. If you haven't met us yet, Jamie and I are friends from, let's see, our our oldest, it's we've been friends for about a decade now, I would oh guess. Yeah. yeah. We met in Anchorage where we were both living at the time. We are both Alaskan transplants who love living out here. 
sadly, we don't uh, live in the same town anymore, but we have maintained our friendship and have been co-hosts of the Praying Christian Women podcast, which started, I believe, in summer of 2018. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I was trying to figure that out. So yeah, summer of 2018. So we're coming up on three years. Yeah. That's crazy. So if you also wanted, um, you know, a format to take with you on the go, we'd love for you to check out the Praying Christian Women podcast if you aren't familiar with that yet. And what we want to do right now, of course, we want to welcome you. We wanted to give you a feel for how this is all laid out, how it's going to work. I know for me, in addition to sharing the encouragement and inspiration that all these speakers have on their hearts to bring you, we really wanted to foster a sense of community as well. So Jamie, do you want to explain kind of how the chat works? And maybe we can even ask people a just for fun question like we do on the podcast. Oh, that's a great idea. So um, I even have one prepared, I think. Oh, um, sorry. I don't. Never mind. I don't. Okay. You explain chat. I'll come up with it just for fun. Good. That sounds good. So the way the chat works is we're using chat tango and you don't even need to be signed up. I realize this. I've never used it before until this. So what you'll do is you're probably watching us now um, in the embedded video on the website that we, the web page that we gave you in the email. Um, so right next to that, um, that, that box is a chat box and you can type any, you can type in a name at the very bottom of that. It'll say set name at the very bottom of that little pink box, um, next to our video. And you can click that and you can set either you can sign up or sign in to chat tango or you can just set a temporary name and just start chatting immediately, which is really easy. So if you just yeah. wanted to get on and type in a name, a username that you want to use, then do it, go for it. And someone will be moderating all of our sessions. Some of them you will actually get the, the speaker will be part of the moderation. In some of them you will get Alana or myself or one of our ministry partners, Sherry or someone else. But, um, but we will have someone there to kind of answer questions that you have. And, but really it's there for you to interact with each other and mm -hmm. to, you know, just share experiences and thoughts and prayer requests and prayers for each other. Um, or just comments and encouragement for the speaker as well, because our speakers mm -hmm. are all amazing women. But I know that each one of them would really be blessed if you let them know how their talk impacted you and, you know, for them to just have confirmation that God has called them to this conference for specific reasons and to reach women. Absolutely. So one thing that we love to do, we start many of our podcast episodes with a just for fun question. So let's do that in the chat. How about just for fun, why don't you tell us who is most responsible for inspiring your prayer life? So this could be more like a teacher or mentor, or it could be more like a prayer partner or friend. Jamie and I have been, like I said, friends for a really long time. We were prayer partners years before the idea of doing a podcast together even dropped on our radar. We, we've been prayer partners since before either of us knew what a podcast was. That's right. That's right. We really have. <laughs> That's how old our friendship is. And I'm just, I'm so blessed. So my answer right off the top is I know I'm blessed and inspired by you. I love how quickly you are to offer prayers for people. Sometimes I'll tell Jamie that I'm having a bad day and she'll call me right then and say, well, let's pray about it. And if we can't talk on the phone, she will actually type out a prayer in text, which, you know, you got to have some pretty impressive thumb power <laughs> to pull that off. Uh, and that has so much inspired me in my prayer life. And I'm just so thankful for my friendship with you. And really, if it, if it hadn't been for that friendship base, none of this would have happened. We wouldn't have a prayer podcast. We wouldn't be doing an online prayer retreat for all these women who are here. Absolutely. And yes, you're, you're number one on my list too, Alana. And just the, the journey that we have been through, both our friendship, our prayer partnership, and the podcast adventure and, and mm -hmm. what that's done have all just really been inspirational and, and really shaped my prayer life in ways that no one else and nothing else has. Yeah. Um, and I have some other mentors along the way, which is kind of fun to look back and think of, you know, the different steps leading up to praying Christian women and mm -hmm. the ways that I've learned about prayer. And yeah, it's just kind of cool. So yeah, let it's us a know. fun, fun journey. 
Yep. So if you have a hard time picking one, you can, you know, name a few different ones. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we want to offer you is just sort of part of our welcome session is a little bit of discussion of what it means to be a praying Christian women. What do we mean by that? It I don't, I think the name of our podcast fell upon us kind of easily because we're like, well, we want it to be for women and we want it to be about prayer and we want it to be Christian prayer. And so, I mean, praying Christian women is probably the most obvious answer that you'll get to, uh, to check off all those boxes. But I feel like there's a lot of potential baggage that can surround even the, the term, you know, I'm a, I'm a praying woman. I am a praying Christian. So we just want to unpack some of the baggage that might be there. And especially if you're new to kind of the way that Jamie and I teach about prayer and approach prayer, we just want to make sure that we're all coming at this from the right place. The last thing that we want is for anybody listening to feel like there's a rubric. And there are some people who have met the rubric of what it means to be a praying Christian woman. And then there's all these other people who are still struggling to figure out what the rubric is. There's no rubric. We are all invited to this amazing relationship with God. And the means that we have to connect with him is through prayer, which is such a blessing. But so many of us have just guilt surrounding our prayer lives. And my prayer life doesn't look like my pastor's prayer life. My prayer life doesn't look like my Sunday school teacher's prayer life. And so we feel ashamed and guilty And then nobody wants to feel ashamed and guilty. So we just stop trying, right? It's like, I don't want to go to the gym because I don't look like all these other women at the gym. And so I'm not going to go to the gym, which means I'm never going to change. (laughs) You know, I feel like prayer kind of comes with some baggage like that. We just want to spend a little bit of time unpacking. I agree. And I feel like kind of the starting point for that is this idea of nobody has a perfect prayer life. And then on the other hand, you and me, because I mean, we have a, we have a a podcast about prayer, right? (laughs) Right. Exactly. I I know. Well, I I joke around sometimes or even very, you know, humbly confess that there are many weeks that I spend way more time talking about prayer than I spend Mm -hmm. actually praying. Mm -hmm. Um, But nobody has a perfect prayer life. Amen. And yet everybody has a perfect prayer life because your prayer life, your, what I, what I, I don't mean that we shouldn't aspire to more or strive to grow, but Mm -hmm. we all have a unique connection with God. And so no one has a perfect prayer life. So, so don't feel like somehow you are less than other women that you see these women that you're going to see speaking are incredible not one of them has a perfect prayer life and they'll admit that freely. In fact, many of them, we ask, what is your biggest prayer struggle? And and everyone has prayer struggles. Um, But on the other hand, you have the perfect prayer life that God has designed for you. God, God has designed you uniquely. Your relationship with God is not like anyone else's. So your prayer life shouldn't and doesn't have to, and, and really shouldn't look like everybody else's or anyone else's. So Jamie and I pray very differently from each other. You know, one of Jamie's gifts is the gift of encouraging others through prayer. You know, that's why her thumbs can type out a whole prayer in text and send it to somebody. And I know she she does that even for people she hasn't met. You know, somebody will email into the show and she'll just type back a prayer for them. That's not my prayer style. And, and you know, there are things that I do in my prayer life that don't look like Jamie's prayer life. And so we, we love unpacking all of the thoughts of what your prayer life should look like. And so, yeah, if you're not a perfect prayer, this is, this is where you're supposed to be. And another one, you know, we struggle with prayer. And just like Jamie said, the, the speakers that you're going to hear today struggle with prayer. And so we don't want to pretend like prayer struggles don't exist. I remember once being a little kid, And my pastor stood from the pulpit. It's one of the only things I remember him saying. He said, here's the backstory, which I forget. And then his friends, he told his friend, I'll be praying for you. And his friend said, well, why would you do that? And my pastor said, because it's so easy. And that stuck with me for like two and a half decades that prayer was supposed to be easy. And the better of a Christian you were, the more naturally prayer would come to you. And nothing could be farther from the truth. Jamie and I have a passion for prayer. We have a passion to teach prayer, but we still struggle 
in our prayer lives. It's not like we wake up every single day and have three hours of uninterrupted quiet time with the Lord, right? So prayer struggles are real. And we want to just encourage you. So how about, let's start this in chat too. Just what are some of the prayer struggles that you're facing right now? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, and it's funny because the number one, I will say unequivocally, unequivoc unequiv is that unequivocally, unequivocally, <laughs> it has a bull, not a bull. <laughs> okay. Unequivocally. In anyway, uh, the number you one, don't have enough time. I don't know. The number one struggle is uh -huh. that I hear that I hear when I'm interviewing people and asking what's your biggest prayer struggle is distractions. Ah, yep. Mm -hmm. That is the one thing. And I know I struggle with that a lot too. And we oh, talk sure. a lot about distractions in prayer, but I'll be interested to hear if that is your number one, give us your number two also. So we have some yeah. variety. Yeah. <laughs> if distractions are number one, number two is I don't have time. Yeah. Right? And, and we get it right. It's not going to work for most of us to set a timer for three hours and, and sit there doing nothing but praying. And, and God's not up there with the timer either, right? And that's this kind of connotation that so many of us have, even if it's on the subconscious level. He's there checking his boxes. Well, Jamie, I see that you spent 45 minutes reading a magazine today, but only 42 minutes reading your Bible. God's, God's mm -hmm. not you know, he's not, I, I picture like a PE coach, you know, like checking off when you're doing the presidential fitness challenges, right? <laughs> this isn't a pass fail or anything like that. So yeah, a huge issue that women face is this idea of, I don't have time to pray. And we want to unpack that as well. And one of our topics that Jamie and I will be presenting in another session is about kind of prayer and productivity and time management and how how do we not only squeeze time in for prayer, but how do we allow prayer to be what sets our schedule and what allows us to live busy lives and to accomplish all of the things that God has put on our plates to accomplish? Right. And and how to get to the place, you know, and I think this kind of like undergirds a lot of the action part of prayer is how do I get to a place where I truly, first of all, believe that prayer works, believe that yeah. prayer is powerful because mm -hmm. if we look at it as just you know a task to check off exactly. our to-do list there there's no power in that there's no drive what's your motivation for doing it other than to check the box right, right. if you really what can we do to believe that prayer is powerful and that god's power is used and at work in us through prayer. And that's yeah. big. That's a big part of oh, the for puzzle. Sure. Not everybody's going to look at it this way, but I came to the conclusion, I don't know, 15 years ago, if my prayers aren't going to make an actual tangible difference in world history, I'm not going to bother spending energy. I'm going to do my thank you God for this food type prayers. And that's going to be it. And so I had to come to this place. I was actively praying through, you know, the, the globe and it felt exhausting. And like, why am I doing this? Am I doing this just to check off the box? Cause if I am, that's not a good enough reason. Am I doing it to earn brownie points with God and make him love me more? No, cause God can't love me more than he already does. And so I had to come to this conclusion. If the passionate intercession that I am expending so much spiritual and mental energy on, is it going to have an actual tangible impact? It's not worth it. And so I had to come to realize, okay, that means that I need to believe without the shadow of a doubt that if I don't spend this energy and this time and this passion praying like I do, that the world's going to be a worse off place. And if you look at it that way, that is incentive, right? The world needs our prayers. Our prayers do make a difference and not just in the God gives us a pat on the head kind of way. Our prayers make a difference in the actual outcome of world events, of world history. And that is, it's an inspiring gift and also a tremendous burden. It is. And that's our tagline, changing the world one prayer at a time, because we really do mm -hmm. believe that prayer changes things. And it's just exciting to me. And I don't get to this point of really recognizing this, you know, it, it takes slowing down and thinking about it sometimes to get back to this, but it's just, I, it's exciting to me that God chose to involve us. Like he didn't have to, he didn't have to, and he chose to involve us to allow us to partner with him in seeing his kingdom come and his will be done on earth. 
Yeah. That's awesome. So one of the things that we want to wrap up with are just some of the hallmarks of a praying Christian woman in the 21st century, because we've got examples of prayer warriors from scripture, but those examples are at least 2000 years old, right? So what does it mean to be a praying Christian woman in the 21st century? We kind of came up with just um, a checklist, right? <laughs> we just got done saying that prayer is not about a checklist, but you know, we, we've got a, a non-exhaustive list of some of the hallmarks of a praying Christian woman today. So the first one is that kind of like we spoke about believes in the power mm -hmm. and the efficacy of her prayers. So I think that is kind of a foundation of being excited about prayer, being motivated and driven and having a powerful, passionate prayer life is yeah. to believe in the power of prayer, pure yeah. and simple. It's not just obligation. Yeah. Sometimes obligation is important. Sometimes the sense of duty and discipline is what carries us through, but we, we definitely want to have that passion as well. I think they're, they, they need to go hand in hand. Sometimes the passion's going to be driving more weight at certain times than the discipline. Sometimes you show up because of the discipline and then the passion follows, but they, they do go hand in hand. Another hallmark of a, a praying Christian woman today is a woman who knows that prayer is the real work, right? Sometimes we feel guilty. So let's say that you have a heart to be praying for a certain issue that's impacting your town. And so you're praying for it. And sometimes that makes us feel guilty. Why am I wasting time praying for this issue when I could be out doing something to fix the issue? And that's so backwards because prayer is the real work. That doesn't mean God's not gonna call us to step out in obedience and do some actual deeds, but prayer is where it all starts. Yeah. And especially if you tend to be a Martha personality, I, I mean, I can find myself many times just being in prayer meetings with, you know, at church or something for something church related and thinking and just being impatient, like, well, let's get on with it or mission trips. <laughs> like we're about I've to, got go, things to do, right. Or we're <laughs> at a mission trip and we're ready to go serve. And I think, well, let's, come on, let's go, let's go, let's get, let's get the prayer over with so we can do the action. And I know mm -hmm. it's just, it's how sometimes we operate if we are, you know, uh, task oriented and that's okay. Don't, don't feel the word guilt keeps coming up because we want you to know, mm -hmm. don't feel guilty. If that is your personality, there's a reason God created you that way. And he's using that. It doesn't mean that we can't grow though and recognize, okay, I need to cut back on the chomping at the bit a little bit mm -hmm. and embrace that prayer is the real work and how important it is to that. It's the backbone of every work that we do. I'm going to guess that every single person listening, including you and me, Jamie, has a story. And if you do share it in chat of a time where you took action and then regretted not taking more time to pray, right? How many times do you hear somebody saying, oh, I regret that I prayed for this, <laughs> right? I regret that I spent so much time in prayer about this issue. It doesn't happen too much. I mean, maybe in certain situations, but way more often we're going to regret taking action without taking the time in prayer and covering the issue in prayer that we need. So yeah, just like passion and discipline go hand in hand, prayer and service go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. We're not saying cut yourself off from the world, never leave your house, never do anything for anybody and just pray. But we're saying prayer is where it starts. And from there, God's going to show you your next steps and what he wants you to do. I think it wasn't it Nehemiah at the wall where he had his sword in one hand and his building tools in the other, mm -hmm. hand, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But just the idea of, you know, being, uh, you can, you can be praying and wielding the sword of the spirit at the mm -hmm. same time as you're building God's kingdom. You can be doing yeah. both at the same time as well. Even, you know, not that, that we shouldn't have times to separate out one from the other, but you can also incorporate prayer that, like to let it permeate everything that you do, which kind of leads us into one of these other ones. Uh, you know, one of these other features of a praying Christian woman which is that um, every day in prayer doesn't have to be the same. There are going to be days where you have that quiet time where you can just be still before God and have your coffee and your Bible and pray like crazy. And there are going to be days when you're either shuttling kids around or you're working more than usual or any number of things, even on a mission trip where you're very, you know, uh, task minded right. and you may not have that personal like sit with God for an hour time, 
but that's okay because every day in prayer doesn't have to look the same. You don't have to create this idea of what a good prayer life looks like and follow it to the T, even if it's yes. tailored to your personality, because every day is different. Every season is different. Likewise, you may have exactly um, where you're, you're praying in different ways, where you're journaling through a certain season, and then you don't journal so much and you do more of the like shout out prayers to God. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, there's no formula. Yeah. Yeah. Another hallmark of a praying Christian woman today is somebody who engages her emotions, her imagination, and her intuition while she prays. And I love this because, yes, we are called to pray whether or not it feels good, right? I mean, we start with the discipline and the obedience, but there is absolutely nothing wrong. And I, I hate to even put it in those words. It's an amazing gift. When we are able to connect on that spiritual and emotional level, we are able to sense God's presence. And you know, one of our prayers for you is that during this time, while you're listening to all of the wonderful speakers who are here to bring you that encouragement, that so you do sense God's spirit and that connection with him. It's not the kind of the goal of prayer, but it is a beautiful benefit of prayer. And we can engage our imaginations when we pray. I love talking on this topic. And so like, I'm going to have to, <laughs> I'm going to have to like shorten it, or we're going to be here for five hours talking about praying with our imagination, but being able to picture the better future that you're praying for, being able to picture your loved one saved, like you're praying for being able to picture the prodigal coming home, like you're praying for. It's an amazing way to keep yourself motivated right? Some people feel like, okay, if I'm going to pray for Johnny's salvation, and I don't know if God wants Johnny to be saved. Now, that's a whole other theological bag of worms, because we're told, you know, God's will is that nobody should perish. But you might, you might have it kind of this tug of war in your, in your head and be like, well, what if I picture Johnny praying, but God thinks that I'm kind of demanding an outcome. And that's not what we're talking about. We cannot make demands of God. And there is no formula we can follow to make him answer our prayers. He is far too powerful, far too sovereign, far too omniscient. Sometimes he doesn't answer our prayers for our own good, right? But when we engage that kind of gift of imagination God gives us, it's, it doesn't change anything that's in kind of God's plan or heart. It encourages us, right? It's, I know that I am praying because I can see what my prayers might do in this situation. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that topic too. And, um, you know, I, I thought of, is it Garth Brooks that sang the song unanswered prayers? It's some, I God's do not praise. know. You're not a country music fan. The okay. only country song I really, really know. And like, is God bless the broken road. I think that is a beautiful song. That is if you're song. talking to about any other country song, I'm not going to know it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to say it's Garth Brooks and it's uh, unanswered prayers where he talks about some of God's greatest gifts or unanswered prayers. And he talks mm -hmm. about kind of in, mm -hmm. in the context of a relationship, which, mm -hmm. you know, that brings us to this idea that a praying Christian woman is committed to pray God's will, but also has humility to recognize that we don't always know exactly what that is, like you were mm -hmm. talking about, and our mm -hmm. own desires and selfishness could get in the way. So oh, for sure, there's this balancing act. And, you know, there, there are two sides of that coin. There's the, the side of just, you know, like you said, demanding of God, which is definitely not what we want to do and trying to push your own agenda by giving him a laundry list of prayers that we demand are answered very, you know, but on the other hand, you've got the pitfall of diluting or watering down yeah. the power of prayer praying. <laughs> by always just being like, well, if God wills it, you know, which yes. the Bible even says that, you know, you can make your plans, but what you should really say is if God wills it, this and this, and this will happen. So mm -hmm. in a way, yes, we do need to surrender and submit and, and we do need to be humble, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there's a balance because I do believe that God, if we go to him and ask him to shape our prayers, that he will do that. There've been times and it doesn't always mm -hmm. happen. There are many times when I pray and I don't know the outcome. Or I don't know if I'm praying directly according to, mm -hmm. him. but there mm -hmm. are some times where I'll even begin praying and my prayers will be shaped as I'm praying. And I know it's yes. spirit. And mm -hmm. so we need to be open to that work of the Holy spirit and humble enough mm -hmm. to go into prayer with a, thy will be done 
you know, attitude, not my will, but yours, but not afraid to pray passionately and boldly for the things exactly. in our hearts. Because he wants to hear that. And yes. I think that, that you can do both. I think the goal, here's how I picture it. The goal is to pray with boldness and confidence. Mm -hmm. Also having humility that ultimately God's plan is God's plan, which is better than our plan. Mm -hmm. But to, to combine both of those truths in a way where you're not just offering a limp, wishy-washy prayer, right? Yeah. So it's kind of taking all of those into account. I think there is a, a pretty big level of discernment and intuition that comes in there. Some people have that gift developed more than others. I think as women, as a gross generality, are, are connected to our intuition as a, as a gift that God has given us. Some people have it more than others. Our selfish nature is going to impact that intuition, right? Jamie and I are always so careful. I don't think any of us have ever said, God told me that this is going to happen, right? We might say something like, God is leading me, and I feel like God's really prompting me to pray for this thing that feels impossible. That's about as, as far as we go <laughs> to toe that line. But so, yeah, again, the goal is to pray boldly. Pray confidently, pray with the absolute assurance that your prayers can change the history of the world. Also keeping in mind that God is sovereign, his will is better than our will. And keeping those two kind of two factors in place and coming up with prayers that aren't just wishy-washy. Yeah. And then as the end comes about, if there is an end, if that prayer gets answered in a definitive way, one way or another then you can make sure that, that you, I don't know, walk in that answer with praise and thanksgiving mm -hmm. that God is good, no matter what, which, you know, yeah. sometimes that's hard. Sometimes that's really hard to accept. Mm -hmm. There are some very heartbreaking answers to prayer that mm -hmm. are way, not what we had hoped or imagined or dreamed or wanted that can be very hard. So again, like that's where if this is, if, if this is hard for you to let something go, if God has disappointed you, if he does disappoint you, take that to him. Don't run away from it. That's the other thing is acknowledge that we're human. And that if you do feel disappointed by prayer, by the answers to prayer, talk to God about that too. Yes. Yeah. That There's okay? a sense of just honesty and vulnerability and authenticity that sometimes is lacking in our prayer lives, right? God already knows all of the hurts and the pains and even like the pettiness, right? Sometimes we feel guilty about praying for petty things. God already knows, know. right? So he already you knows that well, we would like to pray for them. I know, you may as well talk to him about it. Um, this brings us to another hallmark and that is a praying Christian woman recognizes and really understands in the core of her being the prayer is a lifestyle. It's not a, a task to check off. And that is such a difference because it's almost like the person who treats tithing as just a straight up, here's my 10%, but they don't live a generous lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? Or here's the person who like in everything they do have generosity at the forefront of all they do. And I think it's the same with prayer. It's not about praying a certain number of minutes a day or about praying the, you know, from the exact same list every day. Those things are fine. And those can be tools to help us develop some of the discipline we need in prayer. But if you're praying for 20 minutes a day and thinking you're a super great Christian, and then the rest of the day, you don't even think about the Lord or his goodness or his will for your life. I'm sorry, you're not a praying woman, right? There's a difference between praying as a task that you do and then forget and about prayer as an entire lifestyle. Yes, absolutely. And um, last, it, one of the last hallmark that we have listed off here is that a praying Christian woman doesn't just pray defensively. She is a warrior. And, you know, I, in, in our emails, sometimes I'll say, Hey, warrior, because we are warriors in you may not consider yourself a prayer warrior. Maybe you picture a prayer warrior being, you know, a, a seasoned older Christian woman sitting in a rocking mm -hmm. chair, just pouring over the Bible and having all this knowledge and feel like you're not there. We are each warriors. We each have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. 
We each have access to the Holy Spirit. If you've placed your faith in Jesus, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to guide you and teach you and intercede on your behalf and intercede even when you don't know what to pray for um, directly to God. You are a prayer warrior. And the temptation is to kind of, you know, and for me, a lot of times I find that my prayers are defensive, that they're very much reacting to situations that come up that I'm like, oh boy, I better pray now. Oh. And I realize that so much time has gone by without doing that offensive warrior prayer for this thing that that really should have been going on before the problems came exactly. up. Exactly. To drive the point home, how, how much energy do we spend in prayers for health? We pray for sick people. <laughs> how often do we pray for the health of people who are, are healthy, right? There's, I think there's defensive prayers, there's offensive prayers, and there's also like maintenance prayers. Do you know what I mean? Like, God, thank you that my family is healthy. Please continue to allow us to enjoy the good health you've given us. That is, it's, it's almost like the, what's the slogan about the pound of cure, an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. I feel oh, sometimes yeah. that's, you know, that's true in our prayers, praying for protection and safety as a, like, we're already protected and safe. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, it does a lot more than praying after the fact, you know, after somebody's gotten in that car accident or after, you know, the devastating accident has happened. No, of course you're going to pray during during the tragedy times, but it's so important to remember that we have all of these gifts of the spirit that God has given us that we can use as a more um, what, offensive, right? Instead of just always praying defensively, oh no, a bad thing happened, now I have to pray against it, right? Mm -hmm. we, we can create hedges around our loved ones with our prayers before the bad things come in. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's a magic wall. It doesn't mean that tragedy is ever going to to impact our families, but it means that we will be covered when those tragedies do come. Yes. yes. Awesome. So that brings us to the end of our welcome. Again, if you wanted to just show up, you know, these next three days and listen to everything back to back or pick and choose the topics that are of interest to you, or you know, show up when you've got the time to show up. We're so glad you're here. If you want to just know that you can take your time, you don't have to drink from the fire hose, you can have this, you know, all of these 23 sessions, uh, 22 sessions, however many sessions we're doing, <laughs> if you want to make sure that you just get all of them, plus the bonus Jamie and I are doing, plus a live kind of Zoom prayer retreat, like a virtual prayer retreat live with all of you, with, you know, more back and forth than, than we're getting right here. We would love for you to join us in the All Access Pass. Yeah. And all you have to do is on your conference page that you're watching this on, just scroll to the bottom and click, I, I want my All Access Pass, and it'll take you right to be able to check out. And if, uh, if you want to, if for anyone who somehow is not on that page, I don't know how you could do that, but if you're listening and you're not on that page, just go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash conference 2021 and click on any of the buttons to sign up and it'll even if you've already signed up it'll prompt you to get an all access pass and you can do it that way too close in prayer and we want to pray for you we want to pray for all of the speakers for the conference for even just the tech stuff involved oh, yeah. so let's go ahead and close up our welcome session with the word of prayer God, I'm just so thankful that you have allowed this conference to happen. So thankful for all of the people who have helped us with the setup side of it, the planning side of it. Thank you so much for these women who are coming to share their encouragement and their expertise. We just pray spiritual protecting, protection over our speakers and over all of the participants and over Jamie and me, over our website, over the technology. And we just ask that these next three days of this conference would bring inspiration and encouragement and breakthrough and healing. And that everybody who listens, whether it's now or later, would be encouraged and blessed. I pray that every single person listening to every single session will have an aha moment or a spiritual breakthrough or an answered prayer or a renewed passion 
to connect with you, God. And I just thank you for Jamie. Thank you for our friendship and our partnership in praying Christian women. And thank you that we can be here and offer this encouragement and this truth. And we just acknowledge what a tremendous blessing it is to be able to be here talking to so many women about prayer and what a gift it is to come into your throne room and connect with you. God, we pray your blessing over this conference, the speakers, the website, and all the listeners and participants. Amen. Amen.